Nusrat Ghani. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mr Speaker, for this opportunity. It is a great honour to represent Wilden in Parliament, and I am thankful for the hard work of my volunteers and all the voters who have placed their faith in me. Wilden has always been highly selective in its choice of candidate and MP. <laughs> Fifteen, Fifteen years ago, Charles Hendry, my respected predecessor, won the Conservative selection against a stellar list of candidates, <laughs> most of whom ended up in the Cabinet. He even grabbed a seat from the present Prime Minister. I note that this time round, much of the Wilden shortlist has joined me in the House. No pressure, then. <laughs> <laughs> Charles not only dedicated his life to public service and served our country as Energy Minister, he served twice as Deputy Chairman and was Chief of Staff to William Hague when he was leader. Charles and his wife Sally were dedicated to the Conservative cause and gave our party backbone, stability and common sense during the toughest of times. No doubt there are parties opposite looking around for a few Charles Hendrys of their own. They certainly need them. <laughs> Mr Speaker, Wilden is the most beautiful of constituencies tucked away in East Sussex and noted by G.K. Chesterton as the place where London ends and England can begin. Mm -hmm. The stunning Ashdown Forest, the market towns of Crowborough, Uckfield and Helsham, as well as numerous community-minded villages, mark Wilden out as quintessentially English. But we are by no means insular. Small businesses flourish, trading beyond Europe to the world. We have winners of the Queen's Award for Enterprise and Innovation, and we even export Sussex wine to France. <laughs> but we depend on our connections to the rest of the country and the wider world which is why the state of the local infrastructure is a source of deep frustration to my constituents. We have a thoroughly inadequate rail service <coughs> that frequently lets commuters down. Delays, cancellations and short trains combined with a lack of communication with passengers are simply not acceptable. Similarly, the broadband and mobile networks in Sussex need to improve. This is not just about the rural economy, but with an increasingly elderly population it is a vital social issue too. And we also suffer Gatwick as a neighbour. Its demand for a second runway does not sit well with my neighbours. Yeah, Mr yeah. Speaker, Britain's relationship with Europe matters deeply to my constituents, and I am pleased to say they have a history of always supporting the Government of the Day's policies towards Europe. Back when the world was the centre of the iron smelting industry, it produced the arrowheads used at Agincourt and later made many of the cannon used to defeat Napoleon. During the Second World War, it was home to the Asper Distra project, transmitting black propaganda into Germany. Of course, we have no need for that now. I hope the prospect of a referendum convinces our European friends that we are serious about reasserting our sovereignty. And I am proud that this government will give the people of this country the chance to decide on their future relationship with the EU. But we must be careful not to turn the debate about our membership of an institution into a closed-minded attempt to pull up the drawbridge. This country is at its best when it is open to the world, embracing opportunities and welcoming people who want to contribute. It will not have escaped the House's notice that my roots are from further afield than East Sussex, and it says a great deal about the constituency which contains the oldest Conservative association in the country, who chose someone with a somewhat different background. You see, Mr Speaker, I am from Birmingham. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, my parents arrived in this country over 40 years ago. My father exchanged his Kashmiri headmaster's cloak for Birmingham Biscuit Factory overalls. And here I am, just one generation later, giving my maiden speech in the greatest democratic chamber in yeah. the world. Yeah. And I have the great privilege to represent the thousands of voters across Wilden. I draw inspiration from a saying from my most famous constituent that politicians everywhere should take to heart. It was Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> yes, Winnie the Pooh, resident of the Hundred Acre Wood in the Ashdown Forest, who said, You can't stay in your corner of the forest waiting for others to come to you. You have to go to them sometimes.
Mr Speaker, I will endeavour to follow that advice in all I do here. Yeah.